Okay, um, I'm going to wait a couple of minutes until people are actually going to join. So while we're waiting, maybe let me know in the chat where you're all from and where you are right now and what languages you speak. I'd love to hear that. And we just give everybody the chance to join. So I'm going to wait a um, couple of more minutes. Oh, hello. From Indonesia. Okay. Lovely. Lovely. Who else is here? So I'm in. Hello, Charlotte. Hello, Charlotte. Thank you for joining. Eastbourne, you speak English, Czech, German. Oh, you speak German. Lovely. Guten Tag. Hi from Yorkshire. Um, from Stroud in Glo oh, Gloucest Gloucestershire. I hope I pronounced that right. Uh, Germany. Hello. Florence. Hi, Florence. You speak German. Lovely. Uh, you study French and German in Newcastle. Lovely. Oh, so many German speakers here today. I'm fluent German speaker. Nice. Anita. Lovely. We just met. We just wait a couple of more minutes. Tell me where you all are and where you're from and what languages you speak. I'd love to know. Rome. In Rome. Oh, lovely. I bet it's still warm there. Nice. Where else? In Wales, French and German. Ooh professionally okay Wales be beautiful lovely part of the world okay um weather not great down here oh really hmm okay um English native student from London hello Inca from Spain you speak Spanish Catalan oh I started learning Catalan, but my brain unfortunately deleted it all. Had no chance to use it. Korean. I learned German and Korean. Wow. Very impressive. That's really good. That's great. Okay, just one more minute, and then I'm going to share my screen and start the presentation. Um, thank you all for taking the time and um, join my session. Catalan is difficult even for native speakers. Oh, thank you very much for saying that. Yes, it really is difficult, but a beautiful language. Very beautiful. Okay, let's just wait one more minute and give people the chance to join. And then we can all start. Okay. Yes, I'm going to share my screen. Uh, from New York, from York. Oh, lovely. I love York. Um, great. Beautiful. Hello to York. Okay, let's start this. Um, I'm going to share my screen now and start the presentation. Um, during the presentation, I won't look at the chat too much. Otherwise, I, I forget what I want to say. Um, but afterwards, we can. Um, I'm going to answer a couple of questions. I'm going to share my screen now and start the presentation. Okay, so um, welcome again. Thank you everybody for joining and for taking the time to listen to my session. I'm very happy that you're all here. Um, today I'm trying to convince you that German is indeed a beautiful language and well worth learning. I know it has a bit of a mm, questionable reputation. Um, but hopefully after today's session, um, you've got a different opinion. So who am I? Um, I? My name is Barbara. I am a native German speaker. So if I make any mistakes, please forgive me. I am from Salzburg. I have a PhD in applied linguistics. I uh, work as a language and intercultural um, trainer and teacher. I teach German as a foreign language to um, international business people here in Salzburg. I work for um, a big company and there are people from all over the world. And uh, I also work as an external lecturer at the University of Innsbruck. 
Um, so what am I going to talk about today? So today um, I want to start with giving you three good reasons why you should learn German, why it's a good idea. There are of course many more, but I'm going to start with three. Then I want to give you an overview of the German speaking countries, where in Europe um, do we speak German? Um, I'm going to then continue with the German alphabet. Uh, I'm going to give you some pronunciation tips and then um, I will tell you about four key concepts of the German grammar. Um, once I've done this, I will let you know how to master the German articles. The articles are always feared among, among uh, German learners. They're very difficult indeed. Um, but I'm hopefully going to be able to give you um, a tip how to master the articles. Then I want to continue with um, telling you about two important verbs that I think are important to learn and start with those verbs and then move on um, to the W questions. Once we have the W questions, you once you know the two verbs and the W questions, that's basically half the battle, you can speak German or at least you can create questions and you can say quite a few things. And as I said at the beginning, I do want to convince you that German is a beautiful language, so I'm going to continue with the beautiful logic of the German language, because German is a very logical language. And um, it's also a language with um, hilarious words and words you won't believe exist. And I, so I will introduce some amazing words. And German has some very fun and unique German idiomatic expressions. So I will introduce you to some expressions that you can use um, in your daily, maybe everyday life. And then I will finish with a German language quiz and you should guess the meaning of the um, expressions. And then in the end, I will show, um, tell you some language learning resources, some useful websites and podcasts. Okay, let's start. So why should you learn German? I'm gonna give you three good reasons. Um, well, first of all, um, there are 90 million native speakers because German is an official language in Germany, Austria, Switzerland, Belgium, Liechtenstein and Luxembourg. And um, there are also around 7.5 million people in 42 countries worldwide that belong to a German speaking minority. Um, so with 90 million native speakers, it is the most widely spoken native language in Europe. And it also ranks among the languages with the most native speakers worldwide, so not only Europe. And German is also a second language by an additional 10 to 25 million people. And it is surprisingly popular as a foreign language. Um, so it's learned by, as a foreign language by 70 to 100 million people. So as an English native speaker, or if you know English, um, it might be a good idea to learn German because English and German both belong to the West Germanic group of the Indo-European language family. So they're very closely related. So there are thousands of words that are that sound the same and even are spelled in a similar way. I'll give you some examples. So we have garden, garten, water, wasser, apple, apfel, father, vater, banana, banane, glass, glass, Milk, milch, guest, gast. So you see what I mean very closely. So whenever you hear or see a German word and it sounds like an English word, it's very likely that it's the same meaning. Um, <clears throat> it's of course a good idea from a linguistic point of view to learn German, but also in terms of economic opportunities and networking potential and cultural gains because it is um, the fourth largest economy worldwide, and it's also the largest European trading partner with the US. Um, and Germany and Austria are home to a large number of economic global players like Siemens, Volkswagen, Adidas, Lufthansa. And here in Salzburg, where I live, there is the headquarter of Red Bull and Porsche, and they're all um, globally recognized brands and corporations. So lots of job opportunities. And a bonus point is that the university in Austria and Germany are is for free. So uh, you can save quite a lot of money. Okay, let's move on and um, to the German language landscapes. I'll give you an overview of the German speaking countries. 
Um, the German speaking countries are Austria, Belgium, Germany, Liechtenstein, Luxembourg and Switzerland. And um, the percentage of each population that speak German is, um, of course, the highest in Germany, 95 percent and in Austria, 98 percent. So the question now is, is it the same language everywhere in Germany, Swiss, in Austria, Germany and Switzerland, the three big countries? As a written language, yes. So German is quite uniform as a written language. So it differs in Germany and Austria and Switzerland, not more than English, for example, does in the UK or the United States. However, as a spoken language, it is it does differ. So there are many, many dialects everywhere in Germany and in Austria. And um, they either belong to the high German or low German dialectal groups. Yeah. My advice is if you go to Austria, for example, don't ask this question, do you speak proper German? I do get this question a lot in my um, language classes. So um, they ask me, do we learn proper German or do you speak proper German? Yes, we do speak proper German. Um, the Germans might disagree because we do have a lot of dialects in Austria. Um, but as I said, the written language and the grammar is uniform across the whole country in Austria, in Germany, um, but they are, of course, regional accents and dialects, not only in Austria, but of course, also in Germany. So it might be that somebody from north, somewhere in northern Germany does has a difficult time to understand somebody from Austria, but also maybe the other way around. However, the standard German is understood by everyone. So let's look at the German alphabet. Um, the German alphabet is pretty um, straightforward. It's the same as English. We just have some extra letters here. So we have those umlaut, the, the vowels with the dots, and they are called umlaut. So we have A with an umlaut, which is E, Ö, like Österreich, and U with an umlaut, it's Ü. Um, and then we have this funny looking uh, letter. It looks a bit like a B, but it's actually an S. Yeah, it's called a set, but um, colloquially it's also called Schafes S, which translates to spicy S. Um, some people might tell you that you can replace every double S with a spicy S. That's wrong. There is a clear rule behind it. So if you have a long vowel like Straße, yeah, St Straße means street, you get a spicy S, you get the funny looking S. Whereas you have a short vowel like Kuss, you get a double S. Yeah, So you could not replace the S in Straße with a double S. Um, two letters or two, a, a combination that is sometimes a bit difficult for non-native speakers to pronounce is the CH. It's a sound. It's like ich and milch. Ich means I, milch means milk. But when you look at this um, picture of the cat, imagine the sound the cat is making. It's a sound. Yeah, You've probably all heard an angry cat before. And that's exactly the sound we need. Sound, yeah? It's at the back of your throat. The next one is the letter R. Those of you who speak French, um, they have a bit of an you have a bit of an advantage because the letter R, the pronunciation in German is very similar to the French R. So der Regen und Reden. Regen is rain, reden is to talk. However, how you can practice it is if you take a sip of water and then gurgle it at the back of your throat. And that gurgling sound that you hear, that's the R. And that's also the place where you want to feel the R down here in your throat. That's how you um, produce the German R. This also might be helpful um, because some letters, like, for example, if you look at the letter I, in German, you pronounce it like the English E. So it's an E. Also, if you want to know how to pronounce the umlaut, so the A with the dots, it's very similar to the sound you have in apple. So a, eh, apple, that's the sound um, you need when you want to have an umlaut. Same for o with an umlaut, girl, ö, 
and beautiful um, for you, Umlaut. So um, this chart might be helpful if you want to know how to pronounce the German alphabet. Okay, let's move on to some um, key concepts of the German grammar. So um, German verbs come second. I put in brackets most of the time because yes, there are exceptions to the rule, especially when you want to combine two um, sentences, then you need to shift it around. But generally for standard phrases, the verb is um, in the second position. Um, I give you some example. Ich lebe in Salzburg. I live in Salzburg. Wir sprechen English. We speak English. If you want to ask a yes, no question, you just um, move the verb and you basically just flip it around. Yeah. So you start with the verb. Lebst du in Salzburg? Do you live in Salzburg? Sprechen Sie English? Do you speak English? That's how you create a yes, no question. The second key concept is always capitalize German nouns. My students always think that this is a mean rule I invented to just annoy them. No, you need to capitalize your nouns. It's not optional. So nouns are words that name people, things and places, and they are always capitalized. Yeah, there is no exception. So ich lebe in einer schönen Stadt. I live in a beautiful town. So Stadt would be a noun. So you need to capitalize it. My Bruder studiert Medizin. My brother is studying medicine. So Bruder is a noun. Medicine is a noun. Mein Hund heißt Fred. So Hund is a noun. Ich liebe Pizza. Pizza is a noun. So you need to capitalize it. Not optional. It's definitely a must. Yes, this is um, one of the most difficult rules. German nouns have genders, yeah? Um, I've seen that lots and lots of you already speak German and you learn German, so you know about this. Um, and you probably think, why? That's just how it is. So we have three genders, masculine, feminine, and neuter. So der, die, and das. Um, so whenever you learn a new word, whenever you learn a new noun, please learn it with the article. Don't just uh, learn the word for table or for dog. Learn it with the with the article. You definitely need it if you want to fully understand the German grammar and if you want to get sentences right. You really need to learn the articles, unfortunately. Um, you see why now, because German has four cases. So we have the subject, which is called nominative. We have the direct object, the accusative. We have the indirect object, which is the dative, and the possessive object, which is the genitive. And yes, the articles change depending on what case it is. As you can see here at the bottom, der, die, das is only for the nominative, so only for the main subject. But when it is an accusative case or a dative or a genitive, the articles all change. So it is important that you know the article in the nominative case, because then you can basically change it in the accusative, dative and genitive case. I know it's difficult, but there is nothing we can do about it. We simply need to learn this. So how do we master the German articles? Well. Most people feel like this, yeah, when they have to choose between the German articles. But as I said, every single noun in German has an article and every single noun is either there, die or das. Um, there are rules behind it. If you're very good with rules, learn those rules, especially the endings. As you can see here with the der, you have the endings ismus or ling. And with D, you have the certain endings. And with thus, you have endings. So whenever you see one of those endings, you know immediately without thinking, OK, this is a D word or this is a dare word. Generally, there are, you might think there are rules, but it has nothing to do with the object itself. So if we have a glass, it's thus glass. There is no because this looks like a neutral thing. No, there is, there is no rule behind it. It's a grammatical gender, that's it. However, as I said, there are some rules. So every person that identifies as a male is um, a dare. So 
same for jobs. For every person that identifies as a male and has a job would be der. Der Arzt, der Lehrer. Der Arzt is a doctor, male doctor. Der Lehrer, male teacher. Die Ärztin, die Lehrerin, female doctor, female teacher. As you can see, the ending, I-N, is always the female ending. Another rule is for the DARE article, all alcoholic drinks are always masculine. That's an easy rule we can all remember. So it's DARE wine, DARE chin, DARE schnapps, DARE whiskey. There's only one exception, and that's beer. Beer is neutral. Then the weekdays, so DARE Montag, DARE Dienstag, masculine, month, October, November, all masculine, and Jahreszeiten, which are seasons, summer, winter. Yeah, and as I said here, learn the endings. If you're good at learning things by heart, then you can learn these endings. Um, my advice is, and it works quite well, That's at least that's the feedback I get from my students, work with a memory palace. Sounds a bit crazy, but it actually does help, especially with the words you simply don't want to remember. Somehow my students never want to remember that weather, weather, is das Wetter. They always say die Wetter or der Wetter. So what is a memory palace? You've probably heard about this um, concept. You go into your head and you pick three rooms. Yeah, Just use rooms you know from your own apartment or create three rooms. And then for each room gets an article. So let's have, as an example, the blue room. So each room has a color and an article. So there is the blue room. So you put a mountain in it. That's a masculine word in, in German. You put a lake in it. It's a masculine word in German. On top of the mountain, there is a man. He's eating cheese and he has a dog. All masculine words. And whenever you open the door in your head to the blue room, you see this little scenery. And whenever you don't remember a word, you put it in there and create a little story. That's how it helps you. Of course, you can't do this with every single word. But as I said, there are certain words that simply don't want to stick. And then you put it in your memory palace rooms. So it would be look like this. So you have the blue room. And in the blue room, there is a man. He's sitting on a mountain and looking at a lake while he's eating cheese. Yeah, in the D room, there is a woman walking down the street while she's eating chocolate. And then all of a sudden she sees a cow, something like this. Create a little story in your head. That usually helps with certain words. Generally, color code your words. Yeah, get three different color post-its. And whenever you learn new words, especially in your apartment, let's say you want to learn the words for furniture, you stick a post-it in the right color onto your um, furniture. So it's easier for your brain to remember that table is blue rather than table is masculine, yeah? So your brain can connect the color and the word together. And that's usually quite helpful. Okay, um, let's start with two important verbs. I um, always recommend to learn sign and haben and really learn those verbs by heart, why? Because you can say quite a few things. You can talk about yourself, who you are. You can say like that you are tired. You can say where you're from. Um, but also you need it later on for the past tense in German. Past tense in German works a little like the French past tense. You need sein and haben and the past tense version of a verb. So sein would be ich bin, du bist, er sie es ist. Wir sind, ihr seid, sie sind, and the capitalized S is not a mistake. This is the formal, yeah? Careful here, um, the first three are irregular, and then it's sind, seid, sind. So you can say, du bist verheiratet, you are married. And then, as we talked about already, flip it around, and then it's a question. Du bist aus Österreich, you are from Austria. Flip it around, it's a question. Du bist müde, you are tired, flip it around, it's a question. Um, haben, the next one is haben, to have. Ich habe, du hast, er, sie, es hat, wir haben, ihr habt, sie haben, sie haben. Yeah, again, the second is irregular, it has the S in it here, and the third one doesn't have an S at all, and the rest, they have the B in it. 
Du hast einen Hund, you have a dog. Hast du einen Hund? Du hast Kinder, you have children. Hast du Kinder? Do you have children? Du hast ein Auto, hast du ein Auto? Do you have a car? Okay, once you know haben and sein, the next thing you should learn um, are the W's, the W questions. Um, there are eight W questions. If you know the W's, you can create lots and lots of questions and annoy um, the people around you. Um, the W questions, um, the first three are wie, was and wer. Wie is how, so wie geht's, how are you? Was, what, was ist das, what's that? And wer, unfortunately, is not where in German, but who. So wer ist das, is who's that? Wo, woher, wohin, wo would be where, wo bist du, where are you? Woher, woher kommst du, where are you from? Wohin, wohin gehst du, where are you going? And the last two are warum and wann. Warum is why, so warum lernst du Deutsch, why are you learning German? And the last one, wann, when, wann hast du Zeit? So if you know those questions, end haben in sein, that's half the battle. You know German, basically, you can create questions and then step by step, just add more verbs and then you can create questions. Okay, uh, as I said at the beginning, I want to convince you that German is a beautiful language. Why do I think it's beautiful? Because it's very logical. Yeah, it's a very logical language. Um, you might disagree or lots of people might disagree that it's a beautiful language because you have we have words like this. German has words like this and you think that's ridiculous, yeah? It's a word that has, I think, 72 letters. It's Rindfleisch, Etikettierungsüberwachungsaufgaben, Übertragungsgesetz. I did not make this up, I promise. It is a real word. It's the law for the delegation of monitoring beef labeling. Okay, so how can I say that this is beautiful? Because um, when you see one of those long words, what do you, what do, you do with it? Um, you split it up, yeah? I color coded the next one, Kraftfahrzeug, Haftpflichtversicherung, because you see what we do in German is we take several nouns and then we smush them together and create a beautiful new word. So Kraftfahrzeug, Haftpflichtversicherung is the motor vehicle, the Kraftfahrzeug, and Haftpflichtversicherung is the indemnity insurance. So whenever you see a scary long word, okay, breathe, relax, and try and split it up. And then you will. It will make sense. Or then if you know one part, let's say you know Versicherung and you know Fahrzeug, just guess the meaning. So how does German work? It literally works like this. Um, you see something and then you think of what could it be? It's a very logical thing. So like, for example, the plane, it's a plane is a Flugzeug. So it's a fly stuff, yeah? Or an elevator in German is a Fahrstuhl, so it's a driving chair. Um, I'll give you some examples here. So gloves, yeah? Somebody thought, oh, my hands are cold. It would be so lovely to have shoes for my hands. So we have hand shoes, gloves. Or a tortoise. It's, um, I agree with this because I have a tortoise myself. If you take away the shield, it does look like a toad. So it's a Schildkröte. Or um, if you look at a slug, a slug looks like a naked snail. So it's a nackt Schnecke. Nackt is naked, Schnecke is a snail. Uh, but very um, logical is also the next one. So diarrhea, not a very nice concept. But anyway, in German, we think of it as that the, fu the food literally falls through your body. So it's a through fall. It's a durchfall. And a very um, one that makes sense as well is the oral contraceptive. It is an anti-baby pillar because that's what it is. It's anti-baby. Um, those were just some example. Of course, there are many, many more. And there are um, just generally words that you won't believe exist because um, we have great words for certain concepts. For example, Kummerspeck. So what is Kummerspeck? 
Um, we've probably all experienced this before. It's literally grief bacon. Speck is bacon, Kummer is grief. So if we go through a terrible breakup and then we eat too many chocolate biscuits, that would be the, the weight we gain would be the Kummer Speck because it's the excess weight put on by emotional overeating. The next one, I'm sure you've all experienced this. Um, we have this idea. It sounds great. We think it's the best idea ever, but it's actually a schnapps idea. Very often when we have such ideas, there is indeed a bit of schnapps involved or any kind of booze, because in the end, it is a silly or very stupid idea that would only sound great to a drunk person. So that's a schnapps idea. Um, the next one is quite a famous one, the Schadenfreude. Yeah, it made lots of newspapers reported about this um, term. It literally is the damaged joy, the Schadenfreude. We've all experienced this before, especially when we watch those videos on Instagram where somebody slips and then falls and we giggle a little. That is Schadenfreude. So it is finding joy in someone else's misfortune. Misfortune is a bit a big word. So if somebody slips in front of you and nothing bad happens, that's a bit of schadenfreude. We giggle a little. Um, the next one, if you like hiking, if you're in the mountains or if you go to festivals a lot, you might you might be a wildpinkler. So wildpinkler, as it sounds, it's a wild peer. So it's someone that is willing to go to the bathroom outside. And the last one is um, a good one. It's a Spargel Tarzan. So what's a Spargel Tarzan? Spargel is asparagus and Tarzan is Tarzan. And we would call a Spargel Tarzan a very tall and skinny man with no muscles. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed those words. Now let's move on to some uh, great idioms and expressions. Um, the first one is Ich verstehe nur Bahnhof. So ich verstehe nur Bahnhof. You've probably used this before if you uh, learn German or you've heard this before. It's the German equivalent to it's all Greek to me. Yeah. And the origin is a bit unclear, but uh, theory is that it was used by soldiers at the end of World War One. And they only wanted to hear the words train station because that would mean that they are discharged and allowed to go home. So whenever you are in a situation where you feel like, oh, I don't understand anything at all. Not only because of language barriers, but also because somebody talks about quantum physics and you don't really know what's going on. You can say, ich verstehe nur Bahnhof. I only understand train station. The next one is alles in Butter. So when somebody asks you, wie geht's? And you are feeling great. You're really having an amazing day. You can say, alles in Butter. So everything is in butter. Where does this come from? It comes from early gastronomy. And restaurants would advertise that their kitchen only uses the most expensive type of fat, which was back then butter. And the last one is my favorite one, actually. Das Leben ist kein Ponyhof. So whenever um, you want to say, well, you know, toughen up, life is tough. Whenever somebody next to you is complaining, saying how hard life is or moaning, then you can say, well, life is not a pony farm because it means Life is not always easy and idyllic um, like it is on a pony farm, because let's be honest, being on a pony farm is pretty amazing. OK, so let's start with the German language quiz. I hope you can guess the meaning. I'm going to open the chat again because I would like you to put the answers in the chat if you know the answers. Um, so I'm going to look at the chat again. So the first one is, what does it mean when somebody in German says, er ist blau, he is blue? What does that mean? A, 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 yes, you are right. You, you do all speak German. So he is drunk. In German, unlike English, when somebody is blue, it doesn't mean that he or she is drunk, uh, sad. It means he or she is drunk. Yes. Okay, the next one. What does it mean? Er hat einen Vogel. He has a bird. He is funny. He is crazy. He is tired. B, 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 B. Yes, you're all right. Very good. So when somebody says, er hat einen Vogel, he has a bird, it means he's a bit cuckoo. Yeah, he's a bit crazy. 
you can also use it as a question. If somebody says something crazy or does something crazy, you can say, has to an informer, like, do you have a bird? The next one, er hat einen Kater, he has a cat. Very literal, he has a male cat, actually, because Kater is the term for a male cat. <clears throat> oh, somebody thinks he is in love. No, A, 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 you all right. A is the correct answer. So when somebody has a male cat in German, he's hungover. Yeah. I, I, I think there are in some languages, maybe I'm wrong, but as far as I remember, there are some other animals used in other languages. Maybe you can let me know in the chat if in one of your languages, you would also use a, an animal for saying that you are hungover. Um, and the last one, das ist French. Oh, thanks, wooden tongue, okay. <laughs> Great, that's a good one as well in French. So, das ist mir Wurst, that's sausage to me. That makes no sense, I don't care, that's great. Yeah, B, das ist mir Wurst, a very useful phrase. The pronunciation is not only Wurst, but Wurst, the ST pronounced like a sh. So, das ist mir Wurst, or even short, mir Wurst. It means sausage to me, both options are the same. Yeah, I don't care. If you say, would you like pizza? Would you like pasta tonight? Mir wurscht. I don't care. Both is okay. Um, okay, so here are some uh, websites, language learning resources. Um, there is the German project website, Deutsch Perfect. If you learn German, especially with books, you've probably come across Deutsch Perfect. There's also the, it has the videos with Nico. Um, then there is DV. DV is the Deutsche, Läng Deutsche Welle. And even the BBC has um, German part to for German learners. There are some German and Austrian TV channels and they have good uh, media take so you can watch TV shows and you can watch films and they're all in German. And um, they're, they're all for free, sorry. Of course, they're all in German, but they're also all for free. Um, one good thing that the TV take ORF has, it has um, news in easy language. It says Nachrichten in einfacher Sprache. Um, what does that mean? So they speak very slowly and it has subtitles. Yeah, so it's a very good idea for German learners that you watch this, then you can watch the news and see if you can understand the current news. And there are some podcasts as well. Um, for example, the Goethe Institute has a podcast and there is Coffee Break German. You've probably heard of this before. Um, and... Just some personal tips. Um, I really love languages. I've started learning lots and lots of languages. Unfortunately, as I said before, my brain started to delete some of the languages if I haven't used them. Um, I know both sides. I know how it feels to learn a language. I know um, how it feels. Um, I know um, how to teach languages. So my personal tips is find your motivation. It's not enough to just say, Oh, I, it would be useful to learn this or that language. No, you really need a motivation. Be passionate about something. Find something that you're really passionate about. Set a clear goals, goal. Also, please laugh about your mistakes, yeah? I make mistakes all the time, yeah? I wanted to say contradiction at a... Um, yeah, at a conference, and I said contraception instead. The, well, that's normal. If you learn languages, laugh about your mistakes. We all make mistakes, yeah? That's part of learning a language. We can't help it. If somebody doesn't laugh about your mistakes or about yourself, that's that's really boring, yeah? Laugh about your mistakes. Don't, you, don't take it too seriously, yeah? And speak, speak, speak. Please don't, don't be like me sometimes <laughs> don't get the perfect sentence in your head and then say it then the op the opportunity like it's over the situation is over it's long gone get the message across yeah very often we are in a country or there's a situation somebody says something and we would just want to re reply but no we don't say it we hesitate because we first put this perfect sentence in our head make sure we don't have any grammar mistakes and then we want to say well okay then it's it's all gone Get the message across. Native speakers will understand you. If you get the articles wrong, 
yes, okay, you get the articles wrong. At one point, you want to get them right. But native speakers will still understand you. If you say die Wetter instead of das Wetter, I still understand you. Get the message across. It's all about communicating. Yeah, that's the most important thing. And be patient with yourself. Yeah, don't be like, I still don't know this and blah, blah, blah. No, language learning takes time. Be patient to yourself. Be nice to yourself. Yeah, and whenever you get something right, give yourself a tap on the shoulder. Be nice to yourself, yeah? And don't be scared of German. I know it's a big language. It has big words. It's a scary language. No, it's also a beautiful and a fun language to learn. So don't be scared of German. Just learn it and say it. So I wanna finish this with one of my um, favorite quotes because it's so nice to learn a language. And every new language is like an open window that shows a new view of the world and expands your attitude towards life. It is beautiful to learn languages. So learn all the languages. I wanna thank you so much for um, taking the time and listen to me. I hope you liked it. If you want to get in touch, I would be very happy. Um, here is my email. Send me an email if you have any questions, if you, want to tell me that you liked it, if you want to tell me that it wasn't good, send me an email. I've just recently started um, an Instagram account. So if you are on social media, I'd be happy if you follow my account. It's called bilingual at any age, because I believe no matter what age, you can learn a language at any age and you can become bilingual at any age. So um, yeah, um, let's get in touch on Instagram. You can send me a message if you'd like, if you um, liked the seminar or the session and you can also find me on linkedin under my name oh, sorry i think i swallowed a frog in my throat okay so it's time for me to say goodbye thank you very much um are there any last questions no i think all good if you do have questions then please just message me on instagram i'm happy to answer this um how would you recommend to learn vocabulary and stay motivated? Yes, input is the most important and stay motivated. If you follow um, in my account, I'll give lots and lots of tips. And I post lots of beautiful new German words as well. Thank you very much. Have a lovely weekend. Bye, everyone. Auf Wiedersehen. Ciao, ciao. Bye.